Okay, going in on a 90-10. A bit of practicing on a long play game. Probably going to play four games. See how we get on. I'm going to push through the center here. Let's grab the pawn like we do. And I just do like taking the knight. I don't see why we shouldn't. Spin the queen here. And take the queen off the board. Again, I don't see any issues other than they're probably coming for the... Um... So we could do this and not castle on the king side, which might hurt us, but we'll go here. Let's get the knight out. Their queen side castling as well. Okay. Going to x-ray through to the rook. So we're not castling at all. Unless we go here. They're not giving us time to get settled. Let's just bring the bishop here. Because it's not a short play game. Bring the bishop here. And no point going for the Fisher Spassky. Let's just keep this here. And shall we queenside castle? But we did get castled after all. They're moving really quick. And we could go here. It's just going to simply chop the pawn. And the bishop's got nowhere to go. It comes back again. Keep that one in our back pocket. So it looks like they're coming for the bishop. So we can move the bishop out of the way and attack the rook. Nice, simple, straightforward stuff. So they've moved real quick, but really has it improved the position? It's quite scary when you're playing over the board as well. Like the last over the board game that I played, the opponent was moving real quick, you know, blitzing out the moves. And I kind of gave them a good position, you know, where they could have actually got a checkmate on us. But it's not to say moving quick doesn't mean you're finding the better moves. More times out of 10, it's ourselves that puts ourselves in bad positions because the opponent's moving quick where we panic and we don't play the best moves that we know we can so they've slowed down now and we can take here it does develop their bishop attacking across here we can push the pawn it does block our bishop so we could take this moment now to actually attack the rook does it improve the position of our bishop we can't hit our bishop, but we don't have many squares to go to after that. We can come back again, but they may drop. But we are attacking a higher piece, so it gives them something to think about. It's not going to hurt us, I don't think, just having the bishop here attacking a higher piece. It does have spaces that it can come back to, can come here if it's defended by the rook. But we're going to take their rook off the board just to try and get a bit of tempi there. If the bishop goes back, it doesn't really want to, but it can do. Now they've really slowed down, so kind of like assessing the position that they've got after moving so quickly. Has it really given them anything? That's not. There's nothing majorly wrong with their position at all. It's pretty even Stevens. In fact, they probably might even be slightly better. So we are now going to look for the exchange of the rooks. Our knight is sadly going back, but the bishop is going to be taking and we'll get the bishop off the board. So that's the Fisher Spassky. It's not doing that, so we'll take with the check on the king and we will attack. Well, we could do, but the pawn's going to be stuck in the middle of the board. So we don't need to, but they are plus one from it. Hmm. So isolated pawn in the center, it's not going to last too long, is it? Let's take. Let's take. Bishop's going to be acting as a pawn. Probably looking at the power base of these pawns pushing. It could quite easily turn out to be a draw. So the moving the pawn attacking, we could hit the pawn, but we'll lose the pawn here. 
could attack their pawn, the bishop can come and defend. Could just sit the pawn like we said, acting as a bishop, sorry, acting it as a pawn. A white square bishop can't hit it yet, it'd have to do a long range movement like this. So we do have a piece that we can attack, which is this. Bishop comes and defends, but it puts a check on our king. King moves, maybe, to protect the pawn. The bishop's coming here, or do we just move the pawn first? Just to get it out of the way. Let's move the pawn first. So we played that backwards. Yeah, so they're coming for the check. So we can now move the king more central. So they're managing this diagonal for the king. So if we get this here, we can maybe get the king across. And they're beating us to the punch, getting this here. So then they can push the pawn onto the bishop. So if we push this pawn, if it goes like this, <clears throat> we can take. But it's going to be bolstering it. Yeah, I don't think there's too much to worry about on that score. They're covering off all the angles that we can potentially attack. So I'm going to push the pawn. So basically just looking at now how to basically go for a draw in this situation. I don't think there's a win. They have a majority on this side. We have a majority in the center, but it's isolated and they do have two bishops. This pawn's not going much further. So we could hit this pawn and always push down. And then we can lock it up. But when you're fighting a majority, sometimes the minority can just deplete them. Would act it like a pawn now the bishop i think we may as well just do that and then wait for them to try and obliterate the area so i'm going to bring the bishop here we're defending defending i think this is going to come something like this to do something like this as if we take then this pawn takes and then the bishop has to move so i think it's along them lines Oh, exact move. Yep. So we could hit the pawn. But I don't think it's going to make much difference because they can still go hit. They can still attack, take, and the pawn is still going to be here. We could do this. That might be the saving grace and keep these pawns doubled. If we go there and the pawn takes, then we're in charge of that area. Could take with the bishop and take back. We're going to hit the pawn. Like we said, the, sometimes the minority can kind of shred away at the majority, depending on the move order of things. They may decide to just drop and then that kind of locks the area down. So these types of end games are the key kind of end games for like my league games and any tournaments that I'm going to. Not saying I'm doing it right. So the king's moving now, so they're basically saying we can take this pawn and we'll get a pawn up, but then they'll take this pawn with a check on our king. So we'd get a pawn, but they get a pawn. We have to move the king and the bishop is covering that area. And we can't attack the bishop, so we'd have to come here. And then their bishop. Going to be looking to, going to lose the pawn, isn't it? Don't lose the other pawn. So we go here like this. He can take back if he wants, but I think they'll take with the check first. We move the king out of the way. Then he takes the pawn. Then our bishop takes the pawn with a check on his king. Then he drops the pawn down. So we would be a pawn up. If that took place, I'm going to take. It's gone straight for it, and we do have the check on the king, which means our bishop can come back here and attack their bishop. And we've now got a pawn 
on the far side of the board. Extra palm. So we've got many minutes to go to try and fashion this into an advantageous position. So moving the king up, I think, obviously his king is just going to come into the corner. But we can, well, I don't know if we're going to get away with that either because the bishop can come here. So it still could be a draw. We do have a passer in the centre as well. Move the king and try and get the king to here. Coming for our bishop. In fact, he's coming down for the pawn as well, isn't he? So if we push here to make it make them know, okay. Maybe we should have moved the king after all. Damn, I thought he was coming for the bishop. Right. So I'm not getting up there. I should I think I should have moved the king first. Oh, Plenty of time to think as well, and it's... Ah, oh, I thought it was coming for the damn bishop. If we push here, his king can't come here. So it's an extra move. But it's going to be on a dark square. And I'm not getting up. Looks like their signal's going. We might win it by default. Attack a pawn. I'm going to attack a pawn. Looks like they've left the game. I don't know why they've left the game. Well, we've got two passes, so I'm saying that is going to be the advantage. So we'll claim victory and have a look at the evaluation. Fingers crossed. Yes! Excellent. That's brilliant. Right, just move back a few moves, right? Okay, see how far it drops with the pawn move rather than the king move 6.4 6.4 it's gone up oh it's gone up so if we had moved the king oh it would have gone down if we moved the king so we made the right move 6.4 yeah. oh it doesn't like the king move it's probably saying pushing yeah it's put h3 no oh, h3 oh it's hitting this palm but in any event move the king happy 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 shouldn't doubt my knowledge very good mm -hmm. Okay, another 90-10. So I'm going to play about four. Just to see how we're feeling. So we'll attack this pawn in the center. And as I've mentioned before, it'd be lovely if over the board play, and um, they played these types of openings that we keep on seeing uh, online. It would be brilliant. I'm going to bring the knight supporting the pawn and support the pawn take if he's doubling not doubling Do we see if we're going to support the knight kingside castle queenside castle probably kingside castling i think we'll go as well see what the bishop wants to do simple chess let's see are they running or are they taking? Uh, they're running, so we may as well hit the bishop. It's coming here. No, maybe avoid doing that. I do like that feel, but let's try and play basic chess. Move the king out of the x-ray from the bishop. Let's play safe, safe chess. It's got an x-ray through to the rook. I'm going to bring the rook here. It's the bishop's protecting the knight. Simple, straightforward stuff. He doesn't take. Bring the knight across, attacking the pawn. Attacking the bishop. So 
So it's kind of halfish. But we'll just take the bishop off the board if he takes. So taking. Mindful we're managing this square if they're wanting to jump here. And we've given up a pawn. We've given up a pawn, but has it improved their position? I've got to ask that question first. He is attacking our bishop. And we would have an isolated pawn in the center if we did this move. Suppose we can bring here. He's actually attacking this pawn twice. I think we're going to hit the bishop. And we have to have the isolated pawn in the center. This is... Oh, look at that. It's piece for a piece. Let's not lose any sleep. Piece for a piece. The bishop is managing this square. We're hoping that they're going to be chomping at the bit to come and get this pawn. Ah, they've not fallen for that. So we can bring the bishop here. We are attacking this, but we can expect this. Right, so they're very switched on. Let's bring the bishop here. So it looks like now we're going to have to support this pawn. He's going to double up. Yeah, which makes sense. We're going to hit the pawn. There's nothing behind the rook. The rook's not getting defended. And if we take, then he's x-raying through and there's nothing protecting. I don't think we're going to survive this one. It's going to be a bishop against the rook. Yeah, so bad, bad placement early on, I believe, in that one. I'm going to bring... Oh! Shit! Oh, well played. Well played. Let's have a look at that. We made gross error right at the very beginning. Gross error. Captured, captured. Attacked, attacked. Move the king. We must have got too arty. So, okay, they take and take. No harm or foul. So we're down a pawn. But it's not that major. It's only like minus one. It's not that major. Doesn't like that move. So what it's a bishop e1. Ooh, I don't know if I'm a fan of that. Oof, don't know if I'm a fan of that. It's blocking the rook and everything. I suppose it's keeping it from doing this. Yeah, so maybe we shouldn't have moved in that. We shouldn't have done that knight move. Yeah, we thought we were being clever. Because really the knight's protecting the pawn, the bishop's protecting the pawn. That shouldn't have happened, really. It's saying knight e2 attacking the bishop. So that, that looks a lot better. Could have even gone this way, couldn't we? What difference would that have made if we attacked here? Yeah, could have even done that. Instead we went for this arty thing of attacking the bishop. Alright, lesson learned. Nice one, good stuff. Let's take. Let's take. See, over the board, players don't do these sort of moves. You know, just whipping off the put, whipping off the pieces. It gives you a kind of a false sense of security when you're playing online, especially when you see these kind of basic babyish type maneuvers. When you don't really see that over the board, I might be wrong, and. You're, other players may go, no, I see that moving all the time. I'm just basing it on my experience where I'm playing players. They don't do these sort of moves. It's probably very rare where I've do played a game where it's like, oh, this is like playing online. And I think there was one. I, I can only remember one, even this year and last year, where it felt like that. So what's actually happening here? We can bring the bishop here attacking or we can just take it's giving the bishop some power to come here or we could just hit the knight and see what he's actually wanting to do i'm going to hit the knight smaller piece attacking higher piece can't be wrong unless of course it's putting you in a bad position but i can't really see them doing any of that uh, simple capture gives us space to attack the bishop Yep, 
Yep, so it gives us space to get the bishop developed attacking a piece. They don't have to take, but you know, they're going back. They're not coming down here. So they're going back, opening up maybe the rook are they? to attack the pawn. So we're just going to push this pawn up because they're going for a two on one with the rook. Now he's x-raying through to our queen, but I think we can go and castle. King safety. Can take, don't mind doubling the pawns in front of my king in this situation. So they go and castle, it does give us a bit of space to come and attack here, but they may just defend. I'm actually going to move my king and bring it up a little bit. Advance it up the board, bait some pawns maybe. I'm going to keep moving my king, but I'm going to bring it to the side. For me, I'm thinking there's benefit because we're kind of we're in end game now, and the further up the board I can get my king, maybe that's going to help squish their king. I'm going to continue moving the king, tempting to sit it here, so they'll probably push the pawn, but we can take this pawn. Not doing that, so we're going to sit the king here. There's nothing much that can move the king from this spot now. All right, so let's go here and we potentially can hit this pawn, the pawn cart here. It's coming for this pawn here, so let's bring the rook here and support. Gives us that tempo to do this. So the pawn's going to push with a check on our king. So we could actually just go and hit the rook, which would make sense to me. I think we'll do that. Let's go and hit the rook. This is a very violent king. Nice one. So now we're going to push the pawn. Can't take like we said. And he's doubled up on our pawn here. So he's probably going for a take take here. Not doing that just yet. Do they? No, they don't lose anything. I'm going to take, seeing as their attention's away from this pawn. And we only got one space to go. Let's go here. We got two spaces. We can go here. Right, so he does have this. If we did this, he's probably still just going to... Let's go with this. Let's go with this. So our aggressive king is said, I'm going to fight the fight for you. Is it working? I don't know. It's, um, it's not that bad. We could come here and attack this pawn. Let's go here. And then the rook, maybe the pawn takes or maybe it's not doing any of that. So we can't take because he'll win our rooks. Just bring this rook here, see if we can hit and attack their rook. So far, the opponent has lost quite a bit of tempo in terms of being able to gain the advantage in this game at the minute. But they still got that opportunity because they can power down on this pawn. So I'm going to attack this pawn. Doesn't mean anything at all because they've got the advantage. They had the advantage when they had the two on one on this pawn and they still do. And we're trying to, what's the word? We're trying to swindle the game. I believe now, just coming here and just bringing the rook here. Blocking that off and the king is in. Let's attack the pawn now, seeing as it's, they're hiding behind their own pawn. So they're plus one, they've got two, well, one fully pat. he's moved down, he's moved down. He's not doing any of that, can't take the pawn because the rook is defending. Right, can we get that rook away somehow? Nope. Let's go here. Coming down for the pawn. Cross, two on one, not going to work. But we have to wait and see what they're going to do. 
the idea would be you'd think that they were going to bring these down here Okay, so this is probably the type of thing that will be happening in the over the board tournaments and league matches that I'm going to be facing this year. So a little bit sticky, but thankful the opponent didn't take the full advantage of their good position. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Go and hit their rook, takes, king takes we're kind of disadvantaged because we're babysitting this pawn we'd go and attack the pawn again where's this rook going oh maybe come and attack in this pawn well we can push up cow let's hit maybe he's making space for this rook to come down oh he has done hmm do we move the king here that caused them some concern let's just bring the king here on a piece okay so we probably stay close don't want to go too far do we Ooh, he's got some sort of pattern hasn't he then he can go here like this goes there like that go back x maybe i might be overthinking that let's Okay, let's go here. Let's go here. Yeah, so he has done that. Let's go here. I thought he had the funky mate thing, but maybe if he goes... Oh, if he goes there, this mate. Isn't it? Ooh. Yeah, that's going to hurt. That's going to hurt. Comes there. They missed an opportunity again. Or are they just playing with me? Because could he not he can just go here, can't he? And then go there. Oh hold on. If he goes there, then the king can move back again, can't it? I feel like I'm getting squished here. He's defending this pawn. We we'll push the pawn up. King takes. That's no good. How do we get round? Oh, let's get this rook off the board. But he is plus one. That's probably what he's wanting us to do. Take that rook off the board. And because he's plus one. We don't have to take the rook when the king moves. But I think I am going to take it, aren't I? Oh, this has got a check on. But then he gets my rook because his king comes to the side. Boom. Comes to the side here. Oh, I wish it was looking better than that. He proposes a take back. No, I'm not doing take backs because this is my tournament practice and league game practice. I think there's something here, but I'm going to do the move order wrong. Check. He moves here. We take He takes He's on all our pawns as well, isn't it? Check moves there. Take that one and takes that one. <sighs> takes king takes. That just feels better for them, doesn't it? Because my King is stuck on the back. And this rook is babysitting this pawn. Whereas this one at least gives us some. <laughs> I don't know. This one feels like there's more activity, but it gives them activity as well. Rook check. King attacks. King attacks, rook puts a ch Oh, I can't do that because the rook, get the rook. 
King attacks. Rook takes. Maybe the rook takes or the king takes, whichever. Takes. Takes. Oh, we can't take this pawn though because the king's defending. I don't think that works out for us, but I don't like that one. I don't like that one. Let's put a check on. Oh man, they've left. I'm going to have to have a look at the analysis on that one. Draw. Showing a draw at the minute, isn't it? It's a draw. King C. That's saying C2. Oh, we were saying going here. Take in. And then this takes. It's showing a draw. Right, well, we'll take that as a draw. I'm not going to take a win where it's not. It was kind of tricky for me. I didn't really see that we had a win. Just felt like we could be taking pieces off the board. And yeah, we'll go with the draw with that one. Nice game. Hmm, that was a thinker. Hmm. Let's have a look. So obviously, we don't want to get in them positions, but what did we do? wrong so they're coming in bishop attacks takes mm -mm. probably doesn't like the doubling of the pawns there, let's just fly back a little bit so was there any real need for the pawn push could we have done this one doesn't like that one. Taking d5. Is that giving this pawn up? No, and my brain doesn't work like that. What about this one? No. Right, I'm happy with that. I don't care. But, right, I'm happy with that one. They bring the bishop down attacking. Not a right lot else to do against that, really, because we're going to be losing the pawn anyway. Hmm. Right. So a few steps before that, then. What could have been done better? So we went attacking the bishop, maybe castle. Still really not going to make much difference if that comes here, is it? Because it's still got that same picture. Hit the queen. Queen probably just keeps that diagonal. Yeah, so it's not really going to make much difference to that type of position. Interesting. So, in essence, bringing the knight there, it's always going to have that threat on it. Or well, if we got the knight out of the way and just took the knight off the board rather than keeping the tension that looks a bit better what does it take with the pawn or the bishop saying queen takes queen takes looking for this greedy munching thing here castles that's better yep that's better so it was it's good to do this evaluation just to get a better understanding putting this here it's no problems really but their knight coming here. Yeah. Let's see again. Doesn't like the opening at all, does it? Doesn't like that capture. It's just basically saying just develop your pieces, but I'm not in the I'm not in that mood to do that sort of stuff. But I think doing this, I would have done that. It's dropping, obviously takes doubles You're definitely not in the move for just getting bounced around it's saying knight f6 but then they're just going to drop oh it's just not getting support at this moment it's usually got some support but that knight is not there anymore so knight f6 would have been uh, it's funny how the brain plays tricks on you my brain yeah 
Yeah, because I'm thinking, oh, I don't want to get chased around, so I'm not going to bring it out then. Let's just take that off the board. <laughs> okay, nice one. Day two of the tournament. Yesterday um, didn't go too well in terms of results. And the games were very strong. These players are like from a different planet. Um, took it to the wire. In both games, I was down a pawn. And that extra pawn cost me. And they played really well. So challenging the pawn, the extra pawn in the first game that we're playing. This is the second round. And I took a buy in the first round as we as we mentioned. So this is round two, and this is the game where basically we were down a pawn and didn't fully do the calculation. I thought I had a better position in my calculation that I'd made. Well, the king's not got any space here, so is there any way of us getting to the back? So this is why we then went and attacked the pawn because we were thinking, oh, we're going to get around here and then we'll mate them around the back. And I believe that was the general thought process of me actually capturing this pawn, thinking I'm getting a background checkmate. But the rook just comes back and defends. After I'd done all of that, I realised we can't actually defend this pawn. And now he's defending the pawn that's going to cause us some trouble. And after that, that's where the downslide occurs because of the extra pawn that they've got here. We did try and we'll show you the rest of the game. And this was game two, round three. And the error that I spotted even for myself during the game, because I wanted to try and come back with a renewed vigor to say, right, I'm in the game. And I kind of reverted back to my old aggressive style of chess, you know, where it's like, right, I'm coming in at you. And in my heart, I knew it wasn't the right thing to be doing, but I thought, well, if I'm going to try and get some type of motivation going in the games, I'm going to need to take it to the opponent. So we brought the queen through. Um, I know it loses us tempo because obviously the knight's just going to come and defend. They could potentially come for a, a queen exchange, which, which would be nice, but highly unlikely. So they brought the knight through <clears throat> and then we went for a massive attack with the knight. And from that point on, I did feel, well, you know, this is not really the way, is it, dude? But let's see what the opponent does in reaction to it. So they castled and we grabbed and we took the knight off the board. And we're feeling fairly okay, the fact that we've doubled the pawns here. But our position really is, 
were kind of backward and the opponent kind of took advantage of that. So the queen now comes across and starts attacking the pawn and this was where the problem started within the game. Basically, we're feeling like we were hemmed in, the bishop was coming around and attacking here, attacking the pawn here, queen gets sighted on here, it's putting pressure here. And we can't really get our pieces out because of the focal point of the attack on the king. Case in point, in the game we're going to show. Um, so today, we're, like we said, we're trying to jump back into the target thing. So we've got two more games to play today. So we'll, we can still hit the target potentially of two draws or one win. Or going the extra mile and getting one win and a draw. So hopefully, fingers crossed, um, we can hit one of those targets. So as mentioned, um, decided to bring back in order to motivate myself and to get back on track with some type of focus and I, I basically said well let's go back to the targets thing because when we go to these tournament type things we 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 were putting targets on but we said that that's putting pressure on us in sense of you know having to perform type thing and it it felt like it was given a bit of a negative type of thing um in my mind and affecting your body as well because you're, you're putting that pressure on yourself but i thought well i didn't come here with the targets in mind and look what's happening you know so i've not focused on actually achieving anything so i've just basically lost the first two games and played them you know so we've turned up and we've been a participant i'm thinking let's change the mindset and let's try and hit a target you know so the original target was two half points, you know, um, two draws to get a one point or to get a win, which would give us the one point or to get the new target was also one and a half, which was to get either a win or three draws. We only have two matches left. So I would have to get a win and a draw in order to achieve the second target. But be able to get the first target, okay, we'll have to see what we can do. Do we get two draws in these next games or do we get a win in one of them? Um, or do we actually get a loss in both of them? So I'm thinking, no, motivate myself and we need to come in and focus and basically learn from what we've just gone through in these previous games and the basic elements were really around not letting the pawns get taken and doubled or you know basically letting them be not sacrificed but ignoring the fact that they're going to be taken 
let's pay attention to our pieces, let's protect the pieces and let's basically play good solid basic chess. So in this particular game here we're playing as black and this opponent um, actually drew against the person who I played first um, who um, beat us in the first game. Uh, so I'm thinking oh well not going to stand much chance here. This was a young kid and their rating was um, really low but you know I, I really do not like playing kids because you don't know what they can do and if he's drawn, drawn against this person who I've already played in the first round um, then sorry in the second round then um, he's going to be fairly good so it doesn't matter what doesn't matter what his rating is um, he, he, obviously he's just starting out type thing so we played as black and we wanted to just play solid chess so I just wanted to see what they wanted to do and they were true to form in sense of blitzing out their moves and really just bang 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 my moves I was really taking my time played old man chess and which can get under the skin of playing uh, the younger player not all of them you know because um, obviously they they have it down pat they play like computers sometimes you know with the engine moves and all that but I was taking my time on each move right from the very start um, just to try hopefully try and get under the skin a little bit because to get a bit impatient we brought the knight through and got the four knights nice and basic so like I said, I'm just going to play as best as I can the solid, solid chess. So they're bringing the knight bishop out. So we're just pushing the pawn up, supporting the pawn. And we're supporting here. Yep, so they basically were pushing out the moves. And I'm hoping that they do take the knights off the board. It's looking very basic, simple, straightforward at the minute. So they do capture. And then they capture, capture. So it's really simple, simplified, but at the same time, it's there's nothing major anyway. There's no attack, so I'm sat there thinking, well, I can probably see why he drew with this or this other player because you know he's finding all the good spots and he's moving dead quickly. I can't see a clear way in at the minute, and they jump the knight in. At that point, I thought to myself, oh, that might be a bit of an overextension. At last, maybe there might be something we can take advantage of. But we bring the bishop back because we're, we're getting kind of worried. <laughs> we're thinking, okay, we're going to have to bring the bishop here and x-ray through to the queen or something like that. Don't really want to take the knight off the board and them have the pawn here for some strange reason. I just didn't want to get any imbalances whatsoever. I wanted to try and keep it as solid in my head as possible. Then the queen, queen move was made small attack on the knight i'm thinking dog i don't really want to push the pawn but we can't bring it back but i want to just get that to take the bishop and at least get it out of the way doesn't do that moves the knight back and i thought that was a bit odd and strange but at the same time i didn't have a clear way in whatsoever so i'm deciding on fianchetto in the bishop and just keeping it safe here for the rest of the game Ordinarily, I would be doing some actions with the bishop, you know, type thing. But I'm thinking, if we're playing solid chess, I have to play a chess that I don't really like, which is that type of thing. This is my bad bishop, but I'm trying to make it a good bishop by just bringing it here and just trying to play some solid chess. They're moving the knight again, but, you know, I didn't really pay much attention to the fact that they're moving it again because obviously it's attacking this pawn here and... Was it the same knight? I think it is the same knight, was it? Yep, well, let's go back one there. Yes, same knight. Same knight did the dance to come round and attack this pawn. So happy-ish in that, well, it doesn't look like they've got a clear plan of working their pieces together or getting the rooks lined up to do any major attacks or just attacking a single pawn. So we move the bishop out of the way, attacking the knight, hoping that they kind of continue with the tunnel vision attack but they don't they bring the queen right down here i'm thinking this is why the bishop's here it's doing all sorts of protective work so now it's going to be a good bishop because it is my bad bishop we bring the bishop and attack the queen 
and then quickly move back. Smaller piece attacking a higher piece, we're just thinking if we can condense this knight and just get it out of the way somewhere, could put a bit more pressure, start maybe the hour attacks on this side. Because currently at the minute it's looking like we're a bit organised. So they move the knight out of the way and we start pushing through the centre to see what we can get disappearing. If it doesn't, we're pushing here, pushing, supporting and just jamming things down. It's bad for our bishops. So I really wouldn't like that really, but we already know our bishop is bad. So it can stay there for the rest of the game as far as I was concerned. Because we do have this type of thing, start attacking on this side. So those were the basic things I was thinking. And they come down with the four pawns. Little square, box shape. Now I don't know if I played this right or not, this next manoeuvre. But we took this pawn here, pawns on the knight. Uh, whereas this pawn is not going to be on any pieces, so they potentially have to do something about this pawn. And they take with the knight. And we take the pawn, and the pawn is on the queen. And we did expect the knight to be, to be taking the pawn. And I think they probably didn't see the fact that the bishop was still protecting here. Because if the knight did take, the bishop could take, or the queen could take for an exchange. So that was the moment where they took a long time thinking. And I thought that might have been a misstep moving the queen. Does it give us a bit of tempo? I was worried about rooks coming in and, you know, x-raying through to our queen and that type of stuff. So we moved our bishop attacking the knight, x-raying through to their pawn. So it's almost like setting the stage for longer term attacks. Really focusing on trying to get the queen off the board to get into the end game with the bishops now having nice sights on their diagonals. It was feeling pretty apt, but nothing's clear. Gage bar might be flashing all happy, but um, nothing's really clear at this moment in time. Then the knight jumps down and it's attacking the bishop. And the issue and concern they've got is that, well, we haven't played the best move, but our queen can come here now. It's attacking the knight. It's also x-raying through to the pawn. It's also looking to actually try and go for the queen at some point. Bishop's looking to take this here. Knights, the queen's got no protection, so we would be able to take if they did not do anything about it. So small, tiny details. I mean, the knight potentially taking here um, probably might have been better for them, I suppose. But the knight comes down and yes, I think because they thought the queen was supporting, they forgot. Because at that stage there, they knew that this was being protected by the bishop and the queen. And then they got arty with the knight. Then we brought the queen up and then they took, forgetting that the bishop is behind the queen. So they were very kind of upset when I did my next move, which was simply capturing the knight. Um, poor fella hitting the table. He looked really sad and really upset. Um, so at that point, um, I thought they were going to resign, but they carried on playing. They moved the queen out of the way. So we brought the queen back now. Got like a little kind of skewer type thing going on with the knight and the queen. Rook's coming to defend, can take the queen off the board. And now we're attacking the rook. And now we're attacking their minor piece. But they actually move the knight out of the way so we can go and defend the bishop. And then we attack their uh, rook, which doesn't have any escape. They took a while over it. And then they put their hand out and um, resign the game. We achieved the target, which was, um, well, the original target, which was one point or, you know, two draws or one win. So that helped jolt me back into, into life, in a sense, to focus and play solid, safe, steady um, chess. Simple direct moves to remove pieces from the ball strategically using the mantra, nice and basic, steady, straightforward. key point 
let's just jump back one queen comes to defend the pawn because the queen is attacking and the knight we know the knight's coming here and we bring the knight as a blocker but the major threat is the rook coming across here it looks dangerous but in my head i i knew it was a draw um i'd offered a draw earlier on in the game um, which was declined and then i offered a draw on my last move here and they said let me think about it and they realized that their queen was going to be in some sort of trouble looks more menacing than it is really in my head i'm thinking this is playing out to be a draw he'd have to make some big massive mistakes for it to actually lose um, but it does look good for us and so they accepted the draw and they they were explaining that well yeah this doesn't look too good for them in terms of the fact that they're going to have to move the queen and go back but i did say you still got play in there you know and um, so in my eyes it's a draw so i'm happy with the draw and no matter what yep the reason why i've not gone through the whole of this game is because it was a draw all the way through the game right from the start to the end of the game so i'm really happy uh with that um doing this fancy rook maneuver here he's gonna have to move his queen back to get out of the way um we're just going to chase it it's just draw all the way through and not just draw i mean it's like a powerful draw it's a good draw it's a good result Um, so all in all the tournament finished with um one and a half and, and when i say one and a half that is physical games played i had a half point buy in the first round so i'm not putting that in my total my total for the actual tournament is two out of five and the results came out and basically because i had under on the under 1500s section i got a rating prize so that was a big shocker as well so it was a lovely rating prize which i never expected at all so i'm really chuffed really pleased with that and it's just showing the work that we're putting in there's little bits of rewards that come out of these types of things so keep up the good work and just keep enjoying the game of chess that's the whole thing about it it was uh, it was a good tournament and appreciate the the reward that we got at the end of it all as well it was totally unexpected i just wanted to play some games played the games and to get a recognition after it is really quite really quite pleasing so that's it for this um particular tournament I'm not sure if there's any more tournaments in the later in the year and got a few league matches coming up and we'll see what happens from there. Bye for now.